Hi there. It's September the 17th and we're continuing our journey through the prophecies of Isaiah, Yeshayahu in Hebrew, the Lord saves, and we come to chapters 25 to 28. Now actually within this, uh, these chapters, chapters 25 to 27 form a great praise, a great exaltation, something like uh, a, a, a song that might be used in the worship in the temple. It's a celebration of what happens. We've, we've touched at the end of chapter 24 on the restoration of Zion, on the re returning, uh, the returning exiles uh, being established, the messianic king being established. And so here in chapter 25, there's a great praise of God, a lifting up, an exalting of the Lord, a celebration of his name. There are words used here in terms of what God is doing. A famous phrase that is quoted in the New Testament, death is swallowed up in victory. There is salvation, there is rescue, the enemies are overcome. Moving on into chapter 26, Zion is established and is established in peace with those beautiful words that ring again and again uh, into throughout history and into our age. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. God is keeping his people in peace. He is establishing his city of Zion. The nations around will be judged, but Zion will be established. And even the ancient serpent, the ancient dragon, will be destroyed in chapter 27. And God will establish his vineyard. He goes back to using that picture that he used back earlier in Isaiah of the, the vines. Israel is the vine. Now the vineyard will be established. There will be the defeat of the enemies, even Egypt and Assyria. There will be a new exodus. The river of Egypt will be uh, blocked off and people will be able to uh, exit into freedom. There's a, it's an amazing three chapters of exaltation and of joy and of hope, uh, even hope over death, as it says, that God is going to raise up his people and establish them. But then uh, the mood changes again in chapter 28, which really opens the next section. We're just reading here verses, the first 13 verses, which are really about Ephraim, which is another name for Israel. And Ephraim, uh, all the time this has been going on in Judah and Jerusalem, Ephraim has been ignoring the Lord, has been getting drunk. The prophets and priests are drunk. They are not listening to God's voice. And so God is going to have to retrain them. He's going to have to chasten them. And it says that God will actually be a diadem over them. God will be a crown over them. He intends to reestablish himself and his covenant among them. But it's going to be uh, as training little children. So in the last uh, few verses, it says there's going to be line on line, precept upon precept. It's going to be very simple. In the Hebrew, kal vakav, sav vasav. It's kind of like a, um, a, a, a jingle that is, is put together. It's a, a very simple ABC kind of teaching that God is going to have to do for Israel in the north to re-establish his presence. But he is determined that his presence will be re-established. Established. And we'll continue that on further as we look at the unfolding of the coming chapters. But it's great to see that God is exalted over his people, that God, when he is in, in, uh, when he is in a place of exaltation, people's minds are held in perfect peace. And today, as we come to these words, as we read these wonderful words, we also can know that we are held in perfect shalom, in perfect well-being, in perfect wholeness, when our minds are focused, when our minds are anchored in God. He holds us safe. Have a very good September 17th.